What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video. This time we're going to be going over the Magicka Sorcerer. This build in particular is going to be very beginner friendly. All the gear here you can either be bought from guild traders or crafted by asking guildmates. So this entire build is basically, um, if you're just starting off on the Magicka Sorcerer, just uh, kind of get a feel of things. You don't have best in slot gear, you don't have your monster helm, you don't have... Um, your Moon Dancer or IA jewelry to use for that 5% extra bonus. Um, all the gear pieces I'm using are going to be purple, uh, so this is very, very, very beginner friendly, um, and you'll just kind of see what kind of DPS you'll be able to pull with just beginner gear. Like with all of our build videos, we will be starting off by uh, going over our gear, then I'll go over ability bars, and then CP distribution. Do keep in mind I am max CP, so your CP distribution is obviously going to differ if you're not at max, but you can kind of get an idea of what it'll look like and sort of the uh, ratio of CP distribution from uh, looking at my own. So we're going to start things off here with gear. We're going to be using a five-piece Julianos, all the vines. This uh, can be crafted... It's a crafted set, you can buy it off guild traders or you can ask somebody in the guild to craft it for you. Um, it is all light armor, all divines, um, all with Magicka enchants. Uh, these have gold Magicka enchants, but you can use purple. For head and shoulders, since we're not using any monster helms, you're going to be using Torox Pact instead. Uh, Torox Pact is also a crafted set. Um, I'm using purple Magicka enchants on these instead of the uh, gold Magicka enchants. And they're also going to be in Divines, and you can see here, you only have, have a, a three-piece effect on Torog since you can't craft jewelry for any of the crafted sets. That's alright though, because the three-piece gives you uh, extra spell damage and extra health. That health is going to be useful. Uh, if you don't want to go for the health, you can always go with Seducers instead. Uh, that'll give you, I believe, Max Magicka and Magicka Recovery. Seducers is going to be in the second area. So yes, it'll give you max magicka and magicka recovery for your 2 and 3 piece uh, effect. So you can use armor of the seducer instead, however I'm going to be us using Torug's pad because that extra health does uh, improve your survivability, especially once you have food on. For jewelry, the ideal uh, beginner's set would be um, rings of willpower, with necklace of willpower to have a full 3 piece set. Those are relatively expensive to purchase though, so instead I'm just going to be using um, necklace of the healer which is pretty cheap. You can find it off Guild Traders. As you can see there, a Master Merchant. You can get all these for under 10k. Uh, if you're going to go for willpower, you can get healthy, robust uh, jewelry instead of arcane. That'll be uh, significantly cheaper. Uh, but arcane would arcane willpower jewelry would be the best. Um, I have two spell damage and one magical recovery enchant. Um, you can go with three spell damage enchants if you want, but you're going to be losing out on some sustain uh, as a result. For your weapons, going to be Torux packed again, Inferno Staff front bar, Lightning Staff back bar. You're going to have Weapon Damage Enchant on your front bar, because this is going to be the bar you're on the most, and your Fire Damage Enchant on your back bar, uh, because you can't stack the Weapon Damage Enchants. So go for a Fire Damage or Oblivion Damage uh, Enchant instead. You can also go with Crusher if you want to uh, decrease the enemy's resistances a little bit, but... Uh, that's completely up to you, the lightning enchant, as long as it's crusher or some sort of damage enchant, that's perfectly fine. You want your staves to be in sharpened, as you can see there, uh, for the extra spell penetration. If you must gold out your gear, your wep golding out your weapons will give you the highest increase in your DPS. Um, it'll increase your damage if I uh, pop it up right here. You can see that you have a massive increase in damage uh, when you gold out your weapons, so... Going to, if you do have the gold, if you do have the resources to uh, make anything legendary, go with your weapons first and then go with your armor. I would go with your Giuliano set first uh, if you want to make those legendary. Going over skill bars, we're going to be having two different skill bars. We're going to be having one with a pet and one without a pet. This is the one with pet. Crystal Fragments, Crushing Shock, you can use Force Pulse, which is the other morph. Your Volatile Familiar, Haunting Curse. I have Haunting Curse just for some added flexibility between pets and non-pet fight. Uh, you can use Daedric Prey, but it will decrease your DPS on non-pet builds. You have Inner Light, and Shooting Stars are ultimate for the front bar. 
back bar is going to be our execute, Mage's Wrath, Liquid Lightning, you're familiar again, uh, Elemental Blockade, your shield, and then the Destruction Staff Ultimate. For this parse though, we're going to be using Elemental Drain. Oh, got a UI error, so I'll just have to do it manually. So we're going to be using Elemental Drain instead of Ward because we don't need to have a shield up um, during our fight. For the non-pet, your bars are going to be exactly the same, except uh, you're going to replace your pet with Bound Aegis instead. Looking at our CP distributions now, for Thief, this is what I have, 75 Arcanus, 75 Tenacity. It's not really worth putting 100 points into either. You're going to be wasting 25 CP points for a 1% extra regen. It's, at least in my opinion, it's not worth it. You can put your points elsewhere. 7 in Mooncalf, 4 in Healthy. Uh, 29 into Warlord to help break free. Uh, since you're a Magicka class, you're going to want to reduce as much stamina cost as possible. So we also have 20 in Tumbling to reduce the cost of roll dodging. Could also put points into Shadow War to reduce cost of blocking for those situations where you have to block cast your spells. For your Mage CPs, 19 in Staff Expert, 26 in Master at Arms, 34 into Elfborn, 56 into Elemental Expert. I have no points into Spell Erosion. You can put a few points in here if you want, but it's not absolutely necessary. You can get pretty close to the Penetration Cap with just Sharpened Weapons and Elemental Drain with your light armor passives. 75 in Thaumaturge for the exploiter passive right here. This does increase your damage done against off-balance enemies by 10%. Uh, since we're using uh, Blockade of Storms, which is the Lightning Staff Elemental Blockade, you're going to have uh, off-balance up for a fair amount of time. For your cha uh, Warrior CP points, 64 Hardy, 64 Elemental Defender is what I got. Make sure to put points into these two first. Uh, there's currently a bug where if you don't put them into these two passives first, you actually won't get the full effect of um, you won't get the full damage mitigation. 14 into thick skinned, 37 into ironclad, 31 into bastion to increase our damage shields. Now, for those of you who are just starting off, get putting in your CP points in. There's something known as jump points. So if I go into redistribute. You can see here Thick Skin right now reduces uh, my damage taken from damage over time by 6.54% is what the tooltip says. However, I'm only really getting a 6% reduction. That is because the way the game uh, calculates CP points, it actually, uh, in computer speak, it floors everything. So it actually cuts off that extra point, whatever, whatever numbers are behind that decimal place, and just gives you that 6%. So your jump points are basically if I take all my points out of thick skin, you can see I'm starting at zero. At two points, I'll have one percent. At five points, I'll have I'll actually hit the next whole number, two percent, and actually get that extra bonus. So if I have four points in thick skin, I'm not actually getting two percent. It doesn't round up. Basically, it always rounds down. So that's those are what we call jump points in the end game. So you always want to have the lowest possible number um, on your CP points. So, unfortunately for me, I have one extra CP point, so it doesn't really matter where I put it, but the jump point here would normally be 13, because that is the lowest, uh, lowest, closest percentage to 6. Another thing to uh, be aware of is something known as direct damage. You can see here, Ironclad reduces damage taken from direct damage, and if we go over to Master at Arms, this increases your damage done with direct damage attacks. Direct damage is basically any ability that deals all of its damage in one hit. Um, so something, for example, your light attacks, heavy attacks, they all deal their damage in one hit. There is no damage over time effect. So basically, Mastered Arms affects anything that is not considered a damage over time. Thaumaturge affects everything else. So if we want to go over our skill bars again, Crystal Frags will be affected by um, Mastered Arms. Crushing Shock as well, you're familiar, and Haunting Curse all are affected by, um, by Mastered Arms. On your back bar though, Liquid Lightning and Blockade of Storms are not affected by Mastered Arms because they are considered damage over time effects. These instead are affected by Thaumaturge. Now there are some abilities that are special cases. The best example here is Shooting Star. 
if you go down the tooltip, it's, it deals one hit of damage and then additional damage over time. So this shooting star actually gets affected by both Mastered Arms and Thaumaturge. That first hit, that 12k flame damage hit, is affected by Master at Arms. However, the flame damage every one second afterward, that one is affected by Thaumaturge. So certain skills do double dip, um, but f so for another good example would be uh, Destructive Clench. That first hit that uh, will be affected by Master at Arms, however, that second additional damage is not that's affected by Thaumaturge. So keep that in mind when you're distributing your CP points. So we're going to go ahead and start off our parse here. I'm going to using buy stat food. Uh, buy stat food right here. Uh, health and max magica. That gets me over to the 17k health. Uh, for endgame content, it's highly recommended to have as close to 17k health as possible. Uh, anything over is obviously very welcome. So you can see here... Uh, with buy stat food, I have 17.5k health. For potions, I'm just going to be using trash potions, Essence of Magicka. These are potions you just pick up from adventuring. Uh, if you have the money and if you have the ability to make them, Essence of Spell Power is what you want to use when you're actually doing trials. Uh, this will not only restore your Magicka and give you 20% uh, extra Magicka regen, but also give you Major Prophecy and Major Sorcery which increase your spell crit and your spell damage respectively. So this is a very powerful potion. All the endgame raiders use this potion. But for right now, since this is a very beginner-friendly build, we're only going to be using our trash potions, potions you can pick up just by adventuring throughout the world. Going to be doing our parse on a 3 mil dummy, just so you guys can see what kind of numbers you can pull. I will be self-applying Elemental Drain, and I'm going to be starting off with... Uh, Destro ulti. Don't be afraid to start off with the Destro ulti. That is completely fine in a parse scenario because you will try to um, try to enter a fight with your max ultimate, uh, with your ultimate already up anyways. So it is accurate. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start to parse in three, two, and one. So there we go, that's a pet build parse with a very beginner friendly build. You can see there I pulled 24k, which is very, very respectable. Uh, it doesn't quite make the... Uh, a lot of guilds go for 25k as their minimum for vet trials, but it does come very close. So you can see here you can pull very good DPS uh, with just crafted gear. 
Um, and do keep in mind, I'm not using my Essence of Spell Power, so I'm not getting my Major Sorcery uptime. If you look at comment metrics here, you know, I'm not having any sort of major sorcery uptime at all. So do keep that in mind with this parse. Um, a lot of this is just practicing up your rotation. So looking at our parse here, you can see Liquid Lightning, Blockade of Storms, and Familiar Damage Pulse. Those are always going to be your top three um, sources of DPS. So you're going to want to keep all three of those up as much as you can. Your second highest uh, DPS contributor should be your light attack from your front bar, in this case your fire bar. You can see here I mix up about 8% of my DPS. Um, if your light attack weaving well, you should be hitting around 8% on your fire. And if you see here, I've hit 3.5% on my light attacks here. Uh, so combined, you're looking at about 11.4% oh, of my DPS came from light attacks. Um, that's pretty good for have not having a not using a maelstrom staff. With a maelstrom staff, that percentage is going to go up just because you have uh, the maelstrom enchantment, which increases your damage done with light and heavy attacks, uh, while you have your blockade down. So 24k on a pet build using just crafted gear and buyable jewelry, not even willpower jewelry, that is very respectable. Um, so you do, you can see here you don't need to get best in slot gear to pull respectable DPS. Um, it's just all about knowing your rotation and kind of just practicing it um, while you are um, trying to put things together and trying to get your best in slot gear. Also keep in mind this is without gold weapons. If I had golded out my weapons, I probably would have hit that 25k uh, minimum for vet trials. So that's just to give you guys an idea. Um, this is the kind of damage you can pull with just crafted gear. Now there are going to be some cases where you won't be able to use a pet. So we're going to go ahead and swap out our pet with Bound Aegis. And now we're going to see what kind of DPS we're going to be able to pull instead. I'm going to have to regen my ultimate here in order to uh, get a accurate parse. So we're just going to basically build up our ultimate on uh, another training dummy until we have our Destro ulti back up. For the beginners out there who are unsure about ulti generation, Basically, every light attack you do in, uh, gives you 27 ultimate over 10 seconds, so uh, if you do the math, that's about 3 ultimate generation per second, if, as long as you're light attacking. So do keep that in mind when you are um, out there raiding. Uh, that's kind of the numbers you're looking at for ultimate generation. So we have our ultimate up. Just have to wait for that dummy to reset before we start our next parse. So again, this is without pet, um, this is with bound Aegis instead of pet. So you're going to expect, you will see lower numbers because that pet pulse is not there anymore. Um, but you do have extra magicka because of Aegis' second effect. Again, we'll be using trash pots and I'll be self-applying Ellie Drain. And here we go.
there you go. That's a non-pet parse with beginner gear, no best in slot gear. Still managed to pull 23.5k DPS. So you can see here, you don't need to have best in slot gear to pull very good DPS. This is without gold weapons. This is without essence of spell power potions. This is um, self-applying your elemental drain. So with all of these things in mind, you have to keep you you know you can definitely pull 25k with beginner gear without best in slot gear. Um, you know if if you have gold weapons, if you decided to use essence of spell power, you can very very easily hit that 25k cap. Um, and get into vet trials without any best in slot gear at all. This is just purple Julianos and three piece Torx packed with necklace of the healer with the uh, healer jewelry. So you know, with everybody saying you need the best gear to be good, you really don't. It's just all about knowing your rotation, practicing your rotation, and getting your rotation down pat. So with that in closing, make sure to practice your rotations. Gear is only half the battle. Rotation is that other half, and without that other half, you're just not going to be able to pull those numbers. So I hope this guide helps you out, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.